Hello and welcome to today's webinar. I'm Kevin Westerling, Chief Editor of Water Online. Thank you for joining us for this presentation, Bridging the Gap to Digital Transformation with Dynamic Digital Twins. We have three presenters today, Patrick Keeney, Worldwide Head of Development for Amazon Web Services, Colby Manwaring, CEO of Innovise, and Peter McIntosh, Senior Product Manager at Innovise. Together, these experts will explain why dynamic digital twins hold the keys to unlocking your data and uncovering the blind spots that keep you in reactive mode instead of optimization mode. You'll learn how this modern platform approach lets you visualize and manage assets and operations today while predicting and preparing for future needs, enabling real world water life cycle management like never before. Before we get going, let's briefly discuss technical information. If at any time during this event you experience technical problems, take a moment to refresh your browser and see if that resolves the issue. If your problem persists, please submit a question via the Q&A system and we will help you diagnose and resolve it. If you have a question for one of the presenters, please submit it through the Q&A system and we'll share them with our experts for follow-up after the webinar. In lieu of a live Q&A, we will be treated to a demo of a new cross-functional visualization solution Info360 Insight to end the presentation. Also, there will be a short survey at the conclusion of the event, and we appreciate your feedback before exiting your session. At this point, I'd like to turn it over to Colby Manwaring, CEO of Innovise. Colby, the floor is yours. Thank you, Kevin. Happy to be here and uh, pleased to be um, alongside Patrick and Peter today in, uh, in talking about dynamic digital twins. For those of you who are, are unfamiliar with Innovise, I thought I might start with a few facts and figures. Uh, Innovise is a global water infrastructure data analytics company. We have offices in the US, Australia, Canada, and the UK, and serve you know, some of the largest cities worldwide, um, uh, such as you know, 49 of the top 50 in the, in the North America region, 10 of the top 10 in the UK, 100% uh, of the top cities in Australia. We've been, um, we've been working on water infrastructure software for over 35 years. We, uh, we count among clients the, the largest engineering and design firms, um, the, um, the smallest engineering and design firms as well. Uh, similarly with utilities from the largest to some of the smallest around the world in 60 plus countries. So uh, enough about Innovise. Of course, if you want to learn more about that, uh, there are many resources uh, online to learn about Innovise. Today, though, I'm interested in, in following up on conversations that I've been having and that many of us have been having around uh, digital transformation at water utilities. And uh, I wanted to start really with the pressures, kind of the why. Uh, why are we talking about this? Why, why is this becoming a more and more urgent conversation? Well, uh, many of you who are at utilities have firsthand knowledge of the items I've got listed on the screen. Many of you who are, might be consultants or other kinds of water experts are involved in this as well. To put it very briefly, water utilities or water infrastructure owners and asset managers are struggling to meet the um, to meet the expected and legally required service levels for water distribution, sanitation, flood control, stormwater management, et cetera. The issues are many, but, but a few I wanted to call out here. One is aging infrastructure. So this infrastructure is failing at an accelerated rate. In the US, where you know, some pipes have been laid over 100 years ago, and um, those pipes were laid thinking a 50 to 75 year life would be, would be adequate, um, like those, those pipes that have been laid uh, 100 years ago, um, statistics and information tells us that water mains in those systems are breaking every two minutes. And leaky pipes lose more than 2 trillion gallons of water each year. So infrastructure, the failing infrastructure, aging infrastructure is a big problem. You know, not, it's not just about infrastructure, it's about people as well. There is... Uh, there is a silver wave of retirement coming over the water industry. The baby boomer generation that uh, largely occupies leadership positions and some of the operational and engineering um, thought leadership positions uh, is retiring over the next four and five years and taking a mass of tribal knowledge out the door. And, um, and, and that creates an information gap for the next generation of water experts. 
The third point is population growth. Again, more about people. Uh, population growth continues to outpace the capacity of water systems and wastewater systems. Now, despite our best efforts to anticipate and build for the future, um, we, we feel like we're constantly playing catch up in the water infrastructure game. That leads pretty quickly to the fourth item, which is uh, you know inadequate capital budgets or just inadequate budgets in general, not, not necessarily capital only. But uh, look, the, the budgetary constraints faced by water utilities, whether private or public, delay the build out of new infrastructure and force utilities to, to stretch their current assets and stretch their operating staff further and further as they you know, cope with service failures, customer complaints, or, and, and repair costs. Finally, the last item here that I want to point out is, um, is very meaningful. Regulatory pressure and regulatory requirements in the water industry. Um, we all know water is a fairly regulated industry because it is such a precious resource, right? Water is life. And as such, public interest in water is, uh, is regulated. Now, as an example, in the United States, there have been a fold increase in water regulations in the last 40 years. Um, that actually, if you break down the numbers, there's, there's more than one new regulatory act related to water every single year. So um, that kind of drives utilities and drives all of us to the, uh, the mentality of service at any cost because the regulatory fines and the non-compliance repercussions are serious. So look, to, to address these, these issues, I and many others in the industry have been promoting the use of technology, hardware and software, to create water infrastructure digital twins. These are virtual representations of real world systems that mimic the behavior of the real world. And that allows water experts to predict water system behavior, to teach new operators and engineers about the systems, to optimize CapEx and OpEx spending, and to monitor or manage systems to support regulatory compliance. So look, yeah, I mean, lots of reasons to hurry up and, and get through uh, a digital transformation and reap the rewards. So why, uh, where are we and, and why are we not all, you know, operating happily with great digital twins that are optimizing our real, real world systems? Barriers. So uh, this listing of barriers on the screen is actually from uh, some mar market research we did about two years, two and a half years ago, where we surveyed Innovise clients and then the broader industry about barriers to digital transformation. What I'd like to do in this webinar is uh, is ask each of you if you might take a moment and and choose which barriers are you facing, which are relevant to you. And as you do that here, go ahead and feel free to click one or several that apply to you. As you do that, I might comment um, on these barriers. You know, incomplete and siloed information, different departments with different data repositories, the data that becomes quickly outdated and not shared across the organization how was identified as uh, an absolute key barrier for digital transformation. Secondly, the modeling and analysis tools that exist, and many of them exist out in water utilities, are often you know, standalone. They're not tied to the data in real time, and they're also not necessarily tied to reports or dashboards or KPIs that are meaningful to the uh, to business. Third, you know, the, the generic analytics and business intelligent tools that require a lot of customization. Um, it's expensive, it's difficult to, uh, to do if you don't have very savvy water, uh, water people that can configure those tools. Fourth, you know, that kind of leads into so uncertain or excessive costs and un, um, insecurity about achieving an ROI with, uh, with generic tools. And finally, perhaps one of the most compelling items is the fact that there's unclear or unassigned leadership when it comes to digital transformation. Um, who's able to take charge? Who, who can bring departments together, data together, and actually have the authority and the um, experience to, to guide digital twin transformation to solve problems. So I hope you had a chance to, to mark a few here. Uh, here are the results of that, of that survey. So um, again, as expected, that siloed data is really uh, a big issue. Right? That's, the, that's our top result here, and it was in our market research. Uh, so not surprising at all. 
Um, it's great to see actually the unclear leadership item. So that being down at 29% here, that represents a great improvement from our results, uh, again, about two, two and a half years ago, where unclear leadership was more up in the 50 to 60% of people said is unclear. Um, fantastic, and, and I've seen that myself, uh, a fantastic move where more utilities are designating leads for digital transformation and, uh, and getting it that even at you know, kind of C-level, CIOs or uh, VPs of IT um, that, that are involved. So thanks for participating in that poll. Let's talk now um, about what we are doing together, Innovise and AWS, what we are doing together to, to uh, address some of these issues. So in, Innovise and AWS have partnered to create a new generation of digital twin tools for water infrastructure. That allows water experts to tackle the problems of water systems and overcome the barriers to digital transformation. I'm gonna hand over to Patrick from Amazon uh, Web Services so he can tell you more about AWS's interest in water and our partnership. Patrick, over to you. Thanks, Colby. Um, as, uh, as mentioned earlier, my name is Patrick Keeney and I'm the worldwide head of water, of water for Amazon Web Services. Uh, AWS Water is a new vertical within the power and utilities uh, program at AWS, focused on bringing cloud technology and services specifically to the water market globally. Um, you know, before I get started here, I did want to just bring something up. We've, we've got a lot of folks from across the entire water industry uh, on this webinar. Um, I don't know how many we're up to now, but I'm probably in the 400 folks on, on the call. I did want to just express some gratitude and some thanks for, I know specifically many of you over the last two weeks have worked, uh, uh, donated time uh, and resources to folks in Texas and throughout the South that were facing water issues. And, and I just think that, it, uh, I just want to have some acknowledgement of everybody's effort around the, around the recent crisis. Uh, we all have, uh, we're all passionate about environmental sustainability, climate change and, uh, and water equity. And I just wanted to, to, to thank, fo thank folks here today. Um, specifically, uh, what I'd like to do today is I wanna give a little bit of a introduction to what Amazon Web Services is doing in the water market, and then present some research that we've completed uh, this January, which remarkably is not, uh, falls very much in line, Colby, with the, with the poll data that, that you just took. So, um, and, and, and then some of that leads into further discussions uh, that, that Colby's gonna handle. So AWS, Amazon Water is part of our power and utilities program. And we, and we like to think that we're, we're all about empowering the digital utility. So you can see on the left on this slide, there are issues that Colby talked about with decarbon, with that market forces um, across all utilities around decarbonization, uh, decentralization primarily in the energy market, digitization and, and aging infrastructure. So what we're doing is we're taking cloud technologies and bringing to bear, so to bringing to bear on some of those issues. So we've grouped them into, into categories around IT transformation, um, operational transformation, things like work and asset management, uh, supply transition and, and customer engagement, which I'll talk a little bit of, about uh, further on here. And those are built on, you know, really the core kind of cloud technologies and services like database, edge computing, IoT, uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning and, and other services. And so we've packaged this all together to bring to the entire utility market. Um, but specifically for the, for the water market, uh, we're doing, we're doing some, some other things. There we go. So, as many of you know, I joined AWS last year, and one of the questions that I got quite often in my transition from the engineering consulting world into into a, a tech company like AWS was, you know, what is AWS doing in the water market? You know, why are you in the market? What is the business? What is this all about? Um, no less than a million questions from my mom, who still I don't think gets it. 
But uh, I came across uh, a quote from Jeff Bezos, which actually helped me in my transition. And Jeff said that he is often asked, what's going to change in the next 10 years? But what he's never asked is what's not going to change. And he submits that that's the more interesting question. Because you can build a long-term stable business over things that are stable in time. And I would submit, and I think we'd all agree, that there are very few things out there in society that are more stable than people's need for safe, clean, and affordable water. And so that's kind of a, that became kind of a foundational thought process for me in building out the AWS water strategy. And that is, this, there's this stability over this issue um, in time. And I think we all, we all know that. So specifically, there are some challenges that you will all recognize in the water market. And I believe, and our team at AWS believes, that cloud technology and services can have a meaningful impact on these very visible challenges that we're facing. So things like water affordability or climate change, uh, aging infrastructure, Colby talked about workforce replacement. Can we use artificial intelligence and machine learning to capture some of what's going on with this silver tsunami, this, this retiring workforce, and, and can we make that water experience more reliable and better for the future? Um, things like non-revenue water and, and water availability. And then one of the things that's interesting for me is when I first put this slide deck together within AWS, um, AWS and all of Amazon, as you know, is all about the customer. So people kept pressuring me to change this, this bullet to the customer experience. And, and I resisted that and I said, no, if, we, if we're simply using cloud technology to make sure that the, the end customer is happy or they've had a good experience on whatever platform we're using, we're not going as far as we should. That bullet needs to be, we need to enhance the public's understanding of the value of water. So let's take that customer experience to a, to a next level. So you'll be seeing some things from AWS uh, around, around that topic as well. And then finally, you know, are there things we can do with emerging contaminants and as Colby mentioned, regulatory compliance. So, so that's a little bit of a background. Uh, if, if folks want to know more, feel free to, to, to connect up with me on LinkedIn or, or um, just get a hold of me. But what I wanted to do today is lead into the, the digital twin conversation is to provide some research that we've done over the last uh, several months. This is uh, AWS uh, proprietary research. It was completed in January, so it's very current. Uh, so this first slide is actually an amalgamation of, of, of two data sets, and I hope you don't mind the liberty I've taken with that. Um, but this is a familiar slide to many of you. It's uh, from a, a 2018 American Water Works uh, uh, State of the Water Industry Report in which they looked at technology adoption in water. And so specifically, what I wanted to know back in uh, November and December is where were water utilities in terms of cloud adoption for these, these specific issues? So you can see in the gold, uh, the implemented technologies, things like SCADA and GIS, very common, or at least to be planned to be implemented uh, in the blue. And you can see where uh, water utilities, at least in 2018, were on that journey there. So what we've done is we've taken what you see in the green and we've asked the same question, but for cloud technology. So the data is not all that shocking. Um, but it does provide some insight. So things like SCADA, for example, 20% of water utilities uh, are planning to move some form of SCADA to the cloud. That's interesting to us. That gives us a, a very referenceable data point. And then you can go all the way up to things like data management, which is very logical. As Colby talked about before, with siloed data, let's get that to the cloud so it's, we, we, we can enable the benefits of getting that data out of those silos and being able to work with it. So that's a little bit of insight as to where water utilities are. And this is a global survey, survey so not, not any one specific geography, where they are with cloud technology adoption. And then similar to what Colby was just looking at was um, 
But what are the barriers within these organizations to cloud adoption within, within water utilities? So not surprising, you know, again, this data isn't revolutionary, but it does provide some insight. You've got almost 50%, and, and again, we allowed utilities uh, respondents to, to pick multiple things, so this isn't gonna add to 100 like the previous slide. Um, but almost 50% of uh, water utilities said that security concerns were, there, were, were a big issue and cost. So those are interesting data points for me because on security, I would maintain that the places like AWS, our cybersecurity program is so robust that it's actually safer to have your information on the cloud. On cost, uh, I think there's a lot of work we've got to do with utilities to understand, to get them to understand what are the costs, the cost benefit of moving to the cloud because total cost of IT ownership is a lot lower on the cloud than it is elsewhere. So you can see this, but uh, Colby, uh, the, the leadership issues there is exactly 29%. The same as uh, same as what you just pulled. So I know we're I know we're that that data point's probably pretty solid. So those are some of the barriers to cloud adoption. And then finally, uh, the final piece, which feeds well into Colby's conversation, is where are water utilities with cloud-enabled digital twins? What are they? Where are they on that journey? And so again. Pretty, I, I think we we understand this data, nothing shocking, but good points of reference. Almost 20% of water utilities feel that they've invested and they've got a functional digital twin that's working. I think because of the ambiguity around the definition of digital twins, that's there, there, there's some more to be teased out of that. Is that actually correct? Is it higher, is it lower? But it's it's still useful. 20, a full 20% that they, of respondents said they were evaluating the use of cloud-enabled digital twins with, you can see the data on folks that are planning to implement in the next year and then from in 12 to 24 months out there. But you can see that almost, you know, over 40% of all the water utilities that we pulled, this again, global numbers, said that they have no plans to, uh, implement cloud-enabled digital twins. And so we need a further deep dive into what are those reasons. And if you overlay those uh, onto the barriers that we just talked about, things like cost and complexity and leadership, I think we'll tease those things out. So one of the great things about working with Innovize on Info360 is I think we're really getting after that 45% that maybe don't understand the cost effectiveness or how Info360 is reducing the complexity of doing something like this. So, so very interesting. So we have one more, uh, we've got another poll question here and uh, we'll give everybody 15 seconds or so to, to answer this. And that is what stage of digital twin adoption are you, are, are you in? And so even if you're not in a utility, but you're somewhere in this, the, the, the realm of influence, we'd like you to answer this. If you're with an engineering firm, you know, give us your answer on where you think the market is. So we'd like to be able to, to take that. So, so we'd like to do a little bit more uh, to unpack, you know, that uh, the, the the part of the utility market that says they have no plans, because I think that would be very useful for, for Colby and myself and, and everybody in the market to, to, to address some of those barriers. So let's see, so for the results here, we have 30% uh, saying, uh, saying that they uh, have no, no plans for digital twins. Uh, this is a great data point, 46% saying that they're uh, on some type of uh, roadmap to get there. Uh, we've got 13% saying that they're in pilot, partially implemented, and only 2% saying that they've got a fully implemented digital twin, which is interesting. That's a very interesting data data point to compare things to. So I hope that gives folks a little bit of understanding around number one, you know, what is AWS doing in the market, specifically in the water market, and then some of the recent results of our of our research. So Colby, I'm gonna turn this back over to you and uh, let you take it from here. Thanks, Patrick. And um, uh, really useful where uh, Innovise can take our market research and data and, uh, and compare and work with Patrick and the AWS 
digital utilities support team to uh, yeah to understand the market and to aim solutions at um, you know at serving that market better and at, uh, at at helping people either get a digital transformation on a roadmap or at the very minimum understand the benefits uh, of of a digital transformation. So look, you know, wh where are we on the path to transformation? Um, the data that was just that was just shown there indicates that we've got a fair amount to do in terms of informing and enabling the market. Now at, at Innovise, we've been super uh, excited as we've worked with AWS in terms of um, you know providing tools that will be um, you know, lower cost of entry, uh, more customized to the water infrastructure market, and and in fact are um, are able to knock down many of the barriers. Really, in uh, in our point of view, uh, the um, the water market is is just right for digital transformation. Right, um, taking just a couple examples here, you know, whether it's water distribution or wastewater and stormwater uh, collection and treatment, there are multiple bullet points, right? These are the bullet points that our customers at Innovise for the past 30 plus years have been saying, we need to do better at, you know, take one, at reducing pumping costs for water distribution. How do we do that? Um, hey, can, can numerical models, can analytics help us predict service failures? Uh, on the stormwater or wastewater sides, hey, we, we need to optimize our use of storage, you know, whether it's underground in pipe storage or in detention ponds or reservoirs. How do we optimize the use of that storage so that we don't have to build so much infrastructure to handle, you know, rainfall runoff events? How do we optimally use that? How do we optimally run our our treatment plant so that we're not overdosing with chemicals or that we're not um, over aerating the uh, the wastewater. I did, these things cost money and have repercussions as to the uh, service level and water quality performance of a wastewater treatment plant. So a lot of what's been done to this point has been planning, modeling, simulation, but often stopped a little short of operational um, uh, operational tools or operational drivers that uh, I believe uh, the, the digital twin concept and the digital transformation concept can, uh, can well, we, we can we can bridge the gap <clears throat> between planning and doing with this digital transformation. So if if the industry and all these things, if, if it's ripe for digital transformation, uh, wh what have we seen? So we've seen an increased focus on digital twins in the industry in the last in three, four years. In theory, what we all what we all envision is something like the the double mint twins, right? Where they look alike, they act alike, they're they're virtually indistinguishable. So the theory of digital twins is that these virtual models of assets or systems and the behavior of those systems are identical to the real world. And um, unfortunately, the vast majority of digital twins today look a little bit more like uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger and Danny DeVito in the old movie Twins. So the, the reality is that, you know, like the movie, we we're somehow supposed to believe that, um, that Arnold and Danny were, were twins separated at birth. But the stark difference that you see here is a lot like what you see with digital twins now. Shortly after a twin is built, it stops looking and behaving like its real world asset because it's not updated with real time data. So it quickly becomes outdated. It's not designed necessarily to be contextual or adaptive. So, you know, there's a lot of manual work that continuously rebuilding the twin and um, because the twin is not designed to be cross-functional or, or really operational in nature, it can't offer really the, the virtual experience of, of replicating a real-world twin. And that's pretty discouraging, right? When, when you have in your mind the double mint twins and what you end up with are the DeVito Schwarzenegger twins, it, it can feel like a failure. But the simple truth is that uh, this this is a journey. That's why it's a digital transformation. 
And starting with what you've got and building on it and improving it can get us to the place we want to be where the digital twins are useful. And in fact, where the digital twins are trusted. So what is what is really key and that I've been talking about um, at Innovise for several years is creating and increasing trust in the digital twin concept, in the digital twin tools, so that we as water experts can go forward with confidence in managing, uh, creating, building, operating water infrastructure. So to, to take the Schwarzenegger and DeVito twins and, and improve that, what we need to do is create a model, data stream, simulations, and analytics that are updated continuously, they're calibrated continuously, and they're validated so that it's always realistic. Model results or digital twin results need to be usable, not just in the back room with theoretical scenarios, but actually contextual to the current situation right now and, and, and adaptive to what's coming next. And finally, you know, the, the audience of the digital twin um, should guide a lot of what it does and how it works and, and the, the user experience with the digital twin. Obviously, the uh, CFO of a water utility has different needs from a digital twin than a field crew that is in charge of fixing leaks. Both of those, uh, both of those people, right, the field crew leader on one hand and the CFO on the other hand can benefit from a digital twin but they don't benefit in the same way and their experience, user experience with the digital twin cannot be the same. If we can overcome these barriers, then we create trust in the digital twin and we can um, move more quickly and more fully towards full usage. I found it interesting in the, um, that AWS data that Patrick presented and then our poll that uh, said, you know, 40, 40 percent and higher um, believe that they have no digital twin, then they have no plan for a digital twin. My experience is that almost every single utility out there has a digital twin of some sort. That might be as simple as a water balance spreadsheet that says, hey, this much water's coming in, this much water's going out, right? It's in Excel. Is that a digital twin? Well, it, it's the starting of a digital twin. It's a piece of a digital twin. Of course, the past 35 years of Innovise history, we've been in the business of providing digital twins in some shape or scope for design or for operational management or for simulation of water systems. So I think there's a need to recognize that um, even in that chunk of people who say, yeah, I, I don't, uh, we don't really have plans. We, we don't have a digital twin roadmap. We're not planning on it. Um, I would, I suspect that there is some sort of form of, of digital transformation going on there, but it's often a bit uh, daunting to again be, be thinking like, well, there's no, no way we're going to get to the full double mint twins type situation here at our utility. So yeah, may, maybe we will just try to ignore um, I, I don't believe that's a viable long-term um, plan. And, and I don't, I actually have a hard time believing that the, the water experts, right, the engineers, the managers, the asset managers, the, the CFOs, the CEOs of utilities, I have a hard time believing that they don't have ambition to move as quickly as possible to improve their utility or to improve their job. Um, there's a tremendous amount of power in, in the water industry, and my experience indicates that everyone is interested in improving water infrastructure and improving the public's experience. So, what are we going to do next? I'd like a, a question. Uh, I'd like to ask you all a question again. Who's leading the adoption of digital twins in your organization? So go back to that leadership point and the point I just made about trust and you know who, who needs to do what and who gets what out of it. There's been a big good increase in in leadership responsibility around digital twins. And if you'd take a minute and say, you know, within your organization, or again, if you're uh, consulting to another organization, what do you see, who is leading the digital twin? Um, I, I think we'll find 
again, that uh, digital twin definition might be a little different when engineering says it versus IT versus operations. But uh, you know, who's leading it in the organization often um, often gets us to the point of engineering saying, no, we don't have any digital twin because their department doesn't have one, but actually operations has one and has been using one for years. So let's see who, uh, who's, who's leading the conversation in the transformation. All right, so um, not surprisingly, engineering is the, is the one that seems to be leading in terms of responsibility for a digital twin. I find that interesting and uh, not surprising because it, it, in Innovise's history, right, we've dealt largely with the engineers and the engineering managers, the ones that are doing highly complex modeling and simulation, right? Those are the, in, that's the engineering department. And um, uh, I, I think when we look at operations at, you know, 9%, IT at 9%, um, outside consultants, you know, helping and driving, um, those, um, those groups or, or that style of leadership um, actually can really bring to this conversation a transformative point of view to, to go above and beyond engineering. Now, I myself, I, I'm a civil engineer. So uh, I by no means mean to, uh, to, to degrade or belittle uh, engineering, um, but I believe there is an opportunity to take what, again, 47% of organizations are saying, hey, engineering's leading this. Take what they're doing and expand it and create a really um, impactful digital twin that goes across the organization. So um, th thanks for the, um, the info here. It is interesting here where, I mean, 16% uh, say, you know, there's, there's, not, uh, there's no current initiative, there's no leadership focus on this. Hopefully, we're, hopefully we can change that with well, with today's discussion and ongoing discussions. Now, how can we change it? What's coming together? How can we move forward more robustly to enable those leaders to achieve their goals and enable the organization to, to achieve a, a digital transformation that ultimately will benefit them? Look, the convergence of cloud technology, IoT, and synchronized modeling capabilities means that now digital models or digital twins can be truly representative of many um, assets in your water system. And these asset models can be created and run on high performance cloud computing program, uh, cloud computing platforms. We can couple and embed models. So we can include you know, any combination of scientific modeling, you know, numerical modeling, machine learning, statistical modeling to allow variable scale and adaptive computational approaches. That's one of the big powerful components of what AWS and Innovise have put together in our, our approach to digital twins. These digital twins can be updated and maintained continuously with data stream connections to asset and performance data that are possible you know, from multiple sources and multiple communication protocols now, with data storage becoming you know, effectively unlimited on the cloud, we can, in fact, consume all of that data and use it to, uh, to actually use it rather than just collect it and put it on a server and um, let it sit there until someone tries to dig through it. Um, the, the, that, that is not, um, that's not uh, the reality anymore. More monitoring data from IoT is just becoming more readily available for calibration and validation. Now, the, the IoT approach, you know, it's still not dense enough, typically. You, know, you can't put enough sensors across an entire city for pure data-driven analysis or, or pure just observational analysis. But the amount of that data that can be fed into to simulation, uh, machine learning, or statistical models is increasing every day. So this convergence, this is where Innovise and AWS have come together to say, okay, there are all the pieces. Can we assemble it into um, a platform and a tool that would allow a utility of any scale to get on board with, with what they need right now and have a pathway to expand you know, almost to, to, to any scale in the future with, um, with, this, with this same approach, approach the same platform? So what we've done is um, um, 
created and are promoting the dynamic digital twin approach using our new cloud platform built on AWS that we call info360.com. The dynamic digital twin approach, we specifically chose those words because we see that the dynamic part is the key to building trust and to creating digital twins that are realistic, reliable, and in fact, you know, they're operational. They're not put on a shelf um, after a single use. They are in fact dynamically used, updated day in, day out, year in, year out. Info360.com is the water industry's first software as a service platform for truly enabling better than human awareness, improving decision making throughout the asset life cycle. So that's where all of the 35 years of intelligence built into Innovise products, whether it's design or modeling or simulation or flood evacuation planning or um, chemical dosing optimization, right? All of that water specific intelligence has been built in to improve the um, decision making uh, ability of operators, of owners, of engineers um, uh, by, by using the Info360 platform. Ultimately, what we want to do is continuously optimize operational efficiency, asset performance, and, um, and, and create a digital twin that everyone from the CEO to the engineer can rely on for, um, for help and for uh, analytical tools to improve their job or improve the outcomes of, uh, of their utility or improve the efficiencies uh, of, of everyone uh, at that business. The Info360 platform, as I mentioned, is built on, on AWS. Uh, I'm not going to go into all the details here. Um, Save to say, you know, there's a shared services platform on AWS that allows us to deploy applications. We're going to talk about Info360 Insight here in a moment. But ultimately, in the long run, we'd be talking about Info360 Asset, Info360 Water, Info360 Flood, where using a common platform, we can enable specific water workflows um, while tying it to data streams, tying it to our Innovise desktop products that we've had out in the market and have in the market now, and tying it to you know, the advanced uh, building blocks and capabilities of the AWS platform. So Info360, the platform, is designed for water, first and foremost. It, the intention is to make it very easy for any utility from small to large to onboard to this platform. So there's no gigantic IT investments, servers to be set up, uh, computational grids to be, uh, to be allocated. You don't have to do any of that. The simplified onboarding and integration with current systems. So again, you don't have to throw out your uh, data historian to use uh, the Info360 platform. In fact, we would say, well, no, of course, don't throw that out. Just hook it up. You don't actually have to throw out any other third-party applications. You can integrate those where they provide value into the Info360 um, world. So we, we, we've attempted to create a platform that's infinitely scalable. It has rigorous security built in. I know that that's a comment that many people have saying, who a cloud platform or really any centralized platform, security is an issue. As Patrick pointed out earlier, there are literally hundreds of people working on rigorous data security uh, on AWS. Now, the typical utility does not have even 100 people working on security, much less hundreds. So I would submit, and, and our data testing and penetration testing indicates that your, that your um, data and operational um, decision-making behind rigorous um, AWS security is more secure than sitting on a server in your server room at your facility. Um, we, we've seen very recently how on-prem uh, on -prem control systems can be hacked into you know, relatively easily. I would submit that um, you know, rigorous uh, security built not just for you know, water utilities, but for all types of utilities and all users provides a big step forward in our ability to, uh, 
uh, to, to use the platform and trust that our data is secure. Look, so that's the platform. Really, at the end of the day, Info360 is intended to empower the water industry, empower experts to you know, gather and unify data, asset data, performance data, historical data, connect it to live data, and connect that to industry best modeling and simulation and analytical tools that, that Innovise has been. It allows then like the third point, it allows discovery and uh, visualization of new insights with the context of that data and the modeling tools. Next, it allows this data and this these asset, um, asset classes and asset uh, um, records to be fed to advanced numerical machine learning or statistical computational models, right? Frankly, again, we don't care what kind of model it is. The important part about a model is does it provide reliable, consistent results that, that indeed um, represent real world outcomes. And, uh, and you know, finally, Info360 is aimed at providing not just analysis and data crunching, but actually prescriptive recommendations on how to improve a water system. So when to turn on the blowers or when to turn off the blowers. Right? We're, we're not gonna control that ourselves, but we can say, here's the optimal operating pattern for your treatment plant under your conditions and Info360 can enable that kind of prescriptive outcome rather than just information thrown at you. And, uh, and, um, and as such, our service levels, regulatory compliance um, are going to go up with Info360. Now to wrap up uh, today, I'm going to pass over to, uh, to Peter McIntosh to throw, show you Info360 Insight. So this is the first application that we built on the Info360.com platform. And it's largely around you know, SCADA integration, hydraulic model integration, advanced reporting, and um, monitoring. Um, it, it's, it's really exciting. If any of you have been following uh, the news, you, know, you would have seen we released this last, um, last Thursday. Uh, as a publicly available uh, application. So uh, Peter is our senior product manager at Innovice, and um, over to you, Peter. Excellent, thanks, Colby. Let's just jump in um, and, and see what the platform does. I, I wanna start off by, by reiterating a couple of key points. And that, that is Info360 is a purpose-built platform providing the foundation for your digital twin. It brings together data from all aspects of your utility into a single system. Uh, it's about transforming raw data into actionable insights. It automates collection and it consolidates data again into the single platform. And it streamlines workflows based on jobs to be done. And it's all about helping the utility save time, money, and providing the best possible service. When a user gets in, they're going to see this main dashboard. The main dashboard provides users with at-a-glance visibility into system-wide activities. This includes summary KPIs to quickly deliver high-level indications of system health, as well as detailed activities like what alerts exist or workflow-focused tools to pick up where a user left off. This all comes with spatial context, the what, the when, the where, and how things are happening across your utility. This is an interface designed with a focus on the job to be done over functional or data silos. <clears throat> Throughout the platform, you will see interactive maps always providing you with relevant spatial context. <clears throat> this allows you to interact with set sensor systems, network assets, alerts, customer data, more, all in a single interface. Typically, this information is spread over many different data systems, and you may have to go back and forth between tools to find the information that you're looking for. What is my customer density around a recent alert? What does my utility infrastructure look like around that same alert? Can I easily look at sensor readings in a certain area to determine anomalies or assess disruptions? Foundational value in Info360 Insight is its analytic tool set in being able to assess and interpret information from what is easily terabytes of raw system data. Dashboarding and analytic tools allow you to cross compare sensors and create meaningful consolidated views depending on the information that you need. Built-in analytics allow users to compare raw data to trends or moving averages. 
<clears throat> and configurable views allow you to see information with the right visualizations. By having full visibility into your system operations and performance, you can be confident in your knowledge of all aspects of your system. Info360 Insight provides built-in KPIs distinctly designed to measure water-specific metrics around usage, non-revenue water, and leakage, and provide ongoing tracking of zonal and system performance. Using traditional methods, it can easily take analysts days or even weeks to gather, consolidate, process, and analyze data to get a single value. And that process must be repeated each time they want a current or updated value. Info360 completely automates all of this, providing you real-time metrics refreshed on a daily basis. Info360's KPIs are purpose-built compared to more general business intelligence tools. We know how to exactly utilize flow, pressure, other sensor and network data to provide meaningful insights. A clear value of understanding your system performance is being able to know exactly when and where your system may be operating out of optimal or even desired conditions. To that end, a user is likely to start their day by investigating system alerts, although they will typically frequently revisit this throughout the day. Users get an immediate view of summary and details regarding any system alerts. How many high priority alerts are there? Low priority, how many alerts have been resolved? By clicking on an alert, you can immediately see alert history. Is this a frequent issue? Has this been happening a lot in the last 48 hours? This helps the operator make more informed decisions on what action should be taken. Has anyone been notified? Has action been taken? Are incidents associated with this alert that I would want to investigate? So let's use that segue to check out our incident tools. <clears throat> Like other tools, this interface includes a summary view to provide a quick but comprehensive picture. Incidents provide the user with timeline activities. If this would open up. <clears throat> and always in a demo, something wants to be a little bit unusual. <clears throat> But if we would see this in uh, incidents uh, that provide user with timeline activities, uh, showing any potential um, activities such as investigations, operator notes, or other uh, activities like customer complaints. Ah, oh, there we go. Or uh, other relevant information. As we can see here in the timeline view, we have done impact assessments, field inspections, we have alerts associated with this activity, and we even have a customer note that's saying we have a specific workspace that is around tracking particular activities. Most importantly, operators can assess potential impacts of any leaks or bursts using your existing Innovise hydraulic models. You can parameterize your, your conditions and quickly understand how many customers may get impacted and what is their spatial distribution. <clears throat> Automatically get recommended isolation scenarios and compare multiple isolation scenarios to see what potential impact may happen and how many customers and what the cumulative customer impact may be around a particular leak or water loss scenario. So I really wanted to say that was a, a very fast and general overview of what the Info360 platform provides. It is about giving the user a snapshot view of their entire data system. It is about providing information on these new alerts, high priority alerts, as well as new incidents that are created. We really want to remind you that this is a purpose-built platform providing the foundation for your digital twin. It's about bringing together data from all aspects of your utility into a single system. It transforms this data into actionable insights. It automates the collection and consolidates data into this single platform, as well as making sure that you have streamlined workflows that are really based on the job to be done making sure you don't have to transfer between one application to another to get the answers that you're looking for. In the end, it's all about helping the utility save time and money and providing the best possible service. 
with that, I'm going to hand it back to Kevin to help us start to wrap up this webinar. Yeah, thanks, Pete, uh, for sharing that overview. Very, very impressive stuff. Um, and thanks to all three of our presenters today for their insight and expertise. As a reminder, we have logged all of your questions today, and they will be passed along to our presenters for individual follow-up. You will also receive an email in the coming days with a full, with the full slideshow, slideshow presentation, as well as an archive link to replay the webinar. So that concludes our session, but we do have a quick survey that will pop up, and uh, we appreciate your feedback in that. So thanks very much for your participation, and please enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks, everyone.